Let's get on with the Un African Union and its agencies, which had a summit in the Nigeria Republic late last week that was focused on the continent's industrialization and economic diversification. The extraordinary summit looks to provide homegrown solutions that will fast track industrialization drive through job creation, entrepreneurship, financing, and the scaling of medium enterprises promoting business innovation across the continent. Joining me now to answer a few questions around this very important topic is Professor Ken Ife. He's a development economist and a consultant in economic policies in West Africa. Thank you very much for coming through on the show tonight, Professor. Uh, let's get started. What else would you consider as a major drawback for the industrialization of the African continent so far? So many types of infrastructure. You have trunk infrastructure, arterial infrastructure, you have specialized infrastructure, you have quality infrastructure, and the industrial infrastructure as well, technological infrastructure. So it's not just power, road, rail, and all that. You have ICT backbones uh, to deliver a lot more of the broadband that you need. But it's not just individual countries having this infrastructure, but there is a regional approach that requires uh, alignment and um, and connectivity infrastructure. Let me just give you an example. On the face of it, everybody agrees that Africa needs 93 billion dollars every year for the next 10 years or 20 years to invest in our infrastructure. But World Bank showed in 20, 2001 that if only we can invest 20 billion dollars in connecting up regional infrastructure, that that can generate extra 250 billion dollars in trade telling you the economy that you will unleash if you have interconnectivity, infrastructure connectivity. So, uh, as a continent, uh, nearly every part of the continent is, uh, has one form or the other of basic or uh, natural resources, from oil to uh, 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 agriculture, whatever. But why has diversification been so sluggish across the regions? Why is it difficult to, for us to diversify? No, first and foremost is you need investment. Investment is the catalyst that enables you to exploit the resources. Then secondly, apart from needing the investment, you need to connect the investment to your factor endowment. In some cases, the factor endowment are natural resources, like agriculture and all of that. In some other cases, there are mineral resources, like you have crude and you have metal, solid mineral and all of that. But there are economies that are neither having those that don't have any of those. If China, for example, Japan, they invested in human resources. Uh, and then I could see Japan, that Japan doesn't have it. All they have is investment in human capacity, and that's why they are doing electronics, they are doing car manufacture, and they are number 10 biggest economy in the world, just by investing in human capacity. Uh, Japan took another route. They would uh, focus on the human, give them the training and capacity, and then have dotted industrial estates around the the, the coastal area, and then begin to become the manufacturer of choice for the economies like West, like America. So Americans were sending the people that have the cheapest labor, they have the number and the quality, and they started making for them. So that was a strategy to enter the stuff. Then the other Southeastern, South Asian countries, like uh, Indonesia and Malaysia, and all, they went for export-led growth. Now, export-led growth is another strategy. They connected it to their natural resources. So in that way, they're able to lift me hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. But in the case of Nigeria, we have the three opportunities to link it to our agricultural resource that creates 60% of the employment, and then have value addition and bring quality infrastructure. If you want to connect it to export, you have to build quality infrastructure. If you want to, if you don't, if you have solid mineral, like we are wasting them, we are sending our crude as commodity instead of refining the crude uh, investing in downstream and midstream in the industry to sell the, the products to the whole of the world. We are not doing that. Instead, we export the commodity and import back the thing, which cancels out any advantage we could have had. But we have uh, another thing. You, know, you have to have industrial infrastructure, such as industrial estates. We have 35 uh, uh, free trade zones, but no structures in place. So you want people to come here with their money and go and build infrastructure for you when you should build the space and people will come and occupy and they simply come with their equipment, manufacture and walk away. So that, that's, you know, we've got a long way to go because we're not connecting the dots at all. We're not connecting the investment to the factor endowments that we have, let alone even talk about human resources. We're not investing in the human resources. 
uh, are there signs that Africa is starting to turn the corner in the pursuit of whether the first, the second, or the third, or even the fourth industrial revolution, this uh, African Union summit, which was done in the Ahmed, in Niger capital, Nigerian president, Muhammadu Buhari, was there. Do you think we are beginning to raise the curtain on where we're going to start from, whether the first industrial revolution or we just join the rest of the world in the fourth industrial revolution? I'm not really sure because we haven't seen the tacit investment in technology, various technologies that are required to lift or, or even the job. And I can't see how we are investing in human resources. If I imagine, for example, the number of diaspora abroad bringing in almost $26 billion. How are we actually constructively investing in human resources? We are not. It's those that escaped that are giving us this, this opportunity. We are, not, we are not investing in human resources. We are not investing in a, a, a education and entrepreneurship and in health and even in employment generation. And if you want to focus on employment, then you have to look at what strategy are we focusing on. Are we going for export-led growth? Are we going for investment in our natural resources so that you can you know, value addition so that whatever we have, like food, and that the cultural commodity, you add value to them, and then open, put the value quality infrastructure so that they can be acceptable abroad and meet all the quality infrastructure, quality conformity assessment requirements. So that is where it will be a, a track. Or are we investing in mineral resources and then convert those and then, you know, if you don't have any of these three strategies, as a fourth strategy, the fourth strategy is this, well, I haven't got the money, I haven't got that, eat what you produce and produce what you eat. So you are using your share number of your, your, your population of over 200 million to say, what well, we are purchasing power. Then let's use that purchasing power to provide for ourselves what we need. And in that way, you can create the capital that you need to start looking at all the other modes of, of investment. But, but, but do you think, Professor, that the new AFCFTA could help leapfrog Africa's industrialization and economic diversification? Do you think that could be the key? Oh, no, it is a very important key because the, the challenge we have in an export-led growth strategy is that if you are doing export-led strategy and you are having to focus on external markets like Europe, America, China, they're going to beat you and beat you well because they, you know, there are so many commodities that they have already found alternatives in the South, South America like pineapple, like some of these, they found so many alternatives. But in Africa, if we conscientiously say we are going to be pro-Africa, buy Africa, make Africa, you will change the game. Let me explain. In West Africa alone, our government spent $100 billion in procurement. If we turn inside and look inside, that $100 billion is like $100 billion investment because we'll start purchasing our stuff. So whatever Nigerians want to purchase from Ghana, Ghana, you do regional procurement directive and open up the space. So all these companies and these countries can combine and do work as a consortium. So you open that space. That is what our use our own purchasing power to drive our, it means our car will manufacture here. Look, we, we buy 200,000 new cars and the 400,000 secondhand cars comes in through uh, Kutun. 600,000 cars. If you bring that business to the companies that are already assembling car in Nigeria, you know, you've changed the dynamics. Using your purchasing power to, act, to activate the, the, the supply chain. That, that's a different ball game. So within the context of AFCTA, it's, you know, it's a done deal. There's nothing you buy for in Nigeria, import in Nigeria, you cannot find somebody in Africa that is making them. What is it? Go to South Africa. They're making a lot of the things that you want. They are manufacturing cars, that's nothing. So it's a matter of using this in, uh, in, um, market that we have to generate uh, and give backward integration to, to our manufacturing capacity. That's all that we need to do. So uh, on a final note, you think the AU summit on industrialization and economic diversification uh, is just one of the ways of getting all heads of state, 54, 55 odd countries together on the continent and to fast track what we need to do? Uh, well, the thing is that they have to continue to, you know, <laughs> to preach to the converted <laughs> and then also you have to make conscious effort because in the end of the day, government has purchasing power. So it is about political will. You know, you know how can you go on having, look at, how much, look at almost 70% of the cars we have here are Toyota. 
and are buying them. Civil servants are buying them when they can support some of the ones that we are currently assembling in the country. You know, and, and they've seen some of them being manufactured. Some cars are being manufactured, assembled in, in China, in Ghana. Some are going to be, just make that effort. If America can come and order 1,000 SUVs from Ghana, America, for their defense, you know, come on. You know, we, we have to follow this full step and do something for our own. We have, we're just not doing it. We just have to do it. Thank you so much, as always, for your insights and perspectives on the continent's industrialization discourse. Professor, Professor Kenny, a development economist in Abuja, have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you.